This crazy stuff is ferrofluid. No, not that type of ferro, like as in ferrous. Not ferrets, ferrous meaning it contains iron. Close enough. How it works is pretty simple. There is a small blob of ferrofluid suspended in some proprietary clear fluid, and if that's all you have, it's not very exciting or interesting. It's kind of like a broken lava lamp. Add a magnet and everything changes. That little blob now looks like a little alien under your control. The science is pretty simple. On this table, I have different magnets of different shapes and sizes. They're rare earth magnets, so I have them spread pretty far from each other so they don't smash into each other. Each of the magnets have a north and south pole. North poles are attracted to south poles and south poles are attracted to north poles. And if you put like poles together, they try to push each other away. Well, you can view those magnetic fields that are shooting out from them using something like magnetic paper. This stuff's pretty cool here, as you can see. To change from viewing the magnetic field in 2D to 3D, you can sprinkle little flakes of iron on magnets, but that gets pretty messy, and this is a much cleaner version. As long as you don't accidentally slip and drop the bottle, the alien is loose. If you can picture what I just talked about in 3D, here is a magnet with magnetic field shooting out of it and also wrapping around to the opposite pole on the sides. As I get this closer to this little blob, you're gonna see spikes form. And as it gets closer and closer, there's gonna be a lot of spikes as it's very strong. And then there's a lot of little magnetic field lines wrapping around back to the opposite pole. On the side of the magnet, it's more horizontal lines versus that spikiness. And whenever you put that up there, it matches just like that and you get more of a smooth blob. It's quite fun playing with these other shapes of magnets as well. You can see the disc here with the hole in the middle, the sphere, the cylinder, and the cube ones are kind of just like the other pieces that come with it. If you get a lot of practice or have a lot of downtime in meetings where you're twiddling your thumbs, there's some pretty cool tricks you can do with this, but they take a little bit of finessing. You can do something to try to get a little piece separated and then you get the magnet closer and you get what's called the formation. You move it away a little bit and you get what I call the school of fish, but be careful not to get next to the big blob because it'll suck it right in and make what I call the puffer fish. You can use the side of the magnet to do what I call shuffling the cards or use two magnets to make what I call a pipe. Now let's get to my opinion about this particular ferrofluid kit. I'm gonna first talk about the positives and then the negatives, and I'll make sure to put a link in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. For the positives, I think they got the proportions down really well. There is just the right amount of ferrofluid to do all these different tricks. If there was too much in there or too little, you just couldn't do them. And the suspension fluid works really well. It makes this blob look like it's moving around in slow motion. I've never had any issues where it's sticking to the walls or anything like that. The second thing that's a big positive is the shape of this bottle. All four sides are flat and that gives a lot of room to play around with these magnets, doing all sorts of tricks. And also the depth varies based on which way you play with it. If you're gonna use two different magnets, it just gives a lot of different options. As far as the negatives go, they are very minor. The first is the magnets. They are actually made of two pieces. There is a magnet and a magnet embedded in the, almost looks like a game piece for a game of sorry or something, but they are separate. So occasionally whenever you stick them together and they hit each other, you'll have to kind of put them back on each other. And I wish it was just all in one, but perhaps you could look at it as a positive because you have options of the magnetic strength if you take it off. The second negative, which is minor, is there is a small amount of air bubbles that's hidden underneath this cap. And if I turn it upside down, you can see them. I wish there was zero air bubbles in here. And as long as you don't turn it upside down, it's not an issue. I have had it where a bubble will get stuck in the ferrofluid if I shake it up a bunch. And it can be kind of a game to try to get that bubble out and go back to the top. But it always seems to do that. Again, very minor. And as long as you're not gonna use it upside down or shake it around too much, not a big deal. I think ferrofluid makes for a great science desk toy and fidget toy, and I think it would look fine in a professional environment. It'd make for a great conversation piece and be a lot of fun to play with while you're in meetings or other things like that. I will say one warning for you, it's completely silent and won't disrupt anyone unless someone accidentally allows these magnets 
to snap together and then you're gonna disrupt those around you. So just be careful with that. And the other warning is make sure that this isn't being used by someone or in an environment where this glass is gonna break or they're gonna to try to take the lid off because you don't want this fluid everywhere. You want it to stay in the bottle.